All right, so now let's take a quick pause and let's just take stock where we are. We've just solved now for our phi as a function of phi, and we have a complete solution for that. And that's great news, because again, we're trying to solve for a full solution for our wave function that represents a rigid rotator being something that spins in space. And at this point, we have now calculated this part, this phi part. And again, our solution is going to be a multiplication of a function of phi times a function of theta. So all we need to do now is then calculate that function of theta so that we can multiply that with this function of phi that we've just calculated. And then we have our complete solution for our wave function for our rigid rotator. Let's now solve that second differential equation, this differential equation that's a function of theta. Now recall that the first differential equation that we'd written down when we'd broken up the two pieces in terms of theta and phi was this sine theta over capital theta d by d theta, sine theta d capital theta by d theta, plus beta sine squared theta is equal to m squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange some of these terms. First what I'll do is I will multiply both sides by capital theta. And so if I do that, that cancels out this theta on the bottom in the first term. And I'm left with sine theta d by d theta, sine theta d capital theta by d theta, plus in the second term I'm going to have capital theta beta sine squared theta, and that's going to be equal to capital theta times m squared. What I'm going to do now is move this term on the right hand side over to the left hand side, sine theta d by d theta, and that operates on sine theta d capital theta by d theta, plus capital theta beta sine squared theta minus capital theta m squared and that's equal to zero. And then finally what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute out this capital theta in the second and the third term. Sine theta d by d theta, that operates on sine theta d capital theta by d theta, plus beta sine squared theta minus m squared, all times capital theta, and that's equal to zero. Now this differential equation is still very complicated and it's not something we're actually going to solve explicitly. The solutions to this differential equation that I have written down right here, the solutions are going to take the form of something called associated Legendre polynomials. Associated Legendre polynomials or Legendre functions. And I'll probably use those two terms interchangeably to define the solutions to this, this differential equation. And so to put what we have right now into a framework where we can then directly apply the solutions that take this form, we're going to make three more substitutions. The first of which is that we're going to let beta be equal to L times L plus 1. And in this case, the solutions for these associated Legendre functions it requires that L ends up being equal to 0, 1, 2, and essentially any positive integer. But if we make this one simple substitution into our current differential equation, we get sine theta d by d theta. That's applied to sine theta d capital theta by d theta. Plus, and then we have L, L plus 1 sine squared theta minus m squared, all times capital theta, and that's equal to zero. The second and third substitutions I'm going to do at the same time. The second substitution is that I'm just going to redefine my function theta of theta, and I'm just going to write that as p of x. And this p of x, again, this has to just do with the framework or, um, of these associated Legendre polynomial solutions, and that they write those solutions in terms of p of x. So we're going to just write them in terms of that just to make this a straightforward substitution or a straightforward application of these solutions. What this means, though, is that because we're dealing in an angular space, 
it means that the x, we have to define that also as an angular component. And so this, at this point, we're going to let x be equal to cosine theta. And so when we look at our, our differential equation right now, we can see that we have a bunch of sine thetas. And so how we get this x is equal to cosine theta and have it written as a bunch of sine thetas is that what I want you to recall, and this is a trigonometric identity, is that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. So what that means is that I can write then x is equal to the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta. And so then if I start rearranging, what I end up getting is if I square both sides, I get x squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. I then move the sine squared theta over to the left-hand side, the x squared over to the right-hand side. So I get sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus x squared. And then finally, if I have a sine theta, then that's equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. The other part to this third substitution that we have to keep in mind is we also have a bunch of d by d thetas. We have one here, we have one here. So we have to also make a substitution for that, that d theta. And so what we can do is we can take, again, this definition, this x is equal to cosine theta, and we can take the derivative with respect to theta. So if I take dx by d theta, that's going to be equal to the negative sine theta. So now if we multiply both sides by d theta and divide both sides by negative sine theta, then what we end up getting is dx divided by negative sine theta is equal to d theta. And then we can use what we just learned here when we tried to define sine theta, which is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. Then we can write dx divided by the negative square root of 1 minus x squared is equal to d theta. So now I have my substitutions, or what I can use for my substitutions to basically plug back in to this differential equation. So if I do that explicitly, anytime I see a sine theta, I'm going to write 1 minus x squared. And anytime I see a d theta, I'm going to write dx divided by negative x squared. So let's do that. So here I've got a sine theta, so I'm going to write 1 minus x squared square root. I have a d by d theta. So instead, I'm going to write d by dx. And that dx is going to be divided by negative 1 minus x squared square root. That's all applied to the square root of 1 minus x squared times d. And here I've got a capital phi. And so here I'm going to use the second substitution. I'm going to write p. And that's as a function of x. Here I've got a d theta. So I'm going to write dx divided by negative square root of 1 minus x squared plus l l plus 1. Here I've got a sine squared theta. Well, sine squared squared is just 1 minus x squared minus m squared. And then I've got a theta, which is just px. And that's equal to 0. Let's now simplify this expression. So here I have root 1 minus x squared. Well, since I have d by dx divided by negative 1 minus x squared, then what that means is that this negative 1 minus x squared here on the bottom is actually really on top, because the derivative, or sorry, the division of a division means that it's multiplied by the reciprocal. So what I really end up having is 1 minus x squared d by dx. And that's just because, again, I'm taking and multiplying these two terms together. And so the square root disappears. I'm also going to hang on to that negative sign. And what I'll do is I'll move this over just a little bit so that I can actually write that negative sign in explicitly. Again, I have the same thing happening down here. I have dp by dx divided by negative 1 minus x squared. So that ends up being multiplied by the 1 minus x squared that's inside the parentheses. So I get 1 minus x squared, and I have my negative sign, dp as a function of x by dx. And then I continue along. What I still have 
or what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute out this 1 minus x squared. So I'll get 1 minus x squared. I'll have my big bracket. and I'll have L, L plus 1, minus m squared, divided by 1 minus x squared, multiplied by p of x, and that's equal to 0. And so then here in front I've got a minus sign, and inside this differential, inside this um, parentheses, I also have a minus sign, and so I can pull out that minus sign and I can make that plus plus. And so what I'll do is I'll just remove it all together. So now let's simplify a little bit further. What I have is I have a 1 minus x squared, and in my second term I have a 1 minus x squared, so I can divide all the way through by 1 minus x squared and get rid of that term altogether. That leaves me with d by dx applied to 1 minus x squared times dp as a function of x by dx plus l l plus 1 minus m squared divided by 1 minus x squared times p of x and that's equal to 0. Finally my last step that I'm going to do here is I'm going to apply this differential to what is to the right of it and so here I have to use the product rule. So I would say first times the derivative of the second, 1 minus x squared times the derivative of the second. Well, that's just going to be d squared p as a function of x by dx squared, plus the second times the derivative of the first. Well, the derivative of the first, 1 minus x squared, is just going to be negative 2x. And so then here is my dp by dx again. I'm still going to add L, L plus 1, minus M squared over 1 minus X squared, all multiplied by P of X, and that's equal to 0. And like I said before, the solutions to this are the associated Legendre polynomials. So what this means is that we have a set of functions where basically if we define m and l, then we're going to get some value or some polynomial that then ends up being the solution to this differential equation. These are the solutions to the associated Legendre functions for a given l and m. Notice that m is enclosed in absolute values. This means that the m is equal to 1 and m is equal to negative 1, for instance, give the same polynomial solution. Also notice that for each combination of l and m, both the polynomial and trigonometric solution are given. We will focus on the trigonometric solutions since we are operating in an angular environment. However, since both are equivalent, using the substitution outlined before, being that x is equal to cosine theta, you should feel free to use whichever solution makes sense for the situation. Our next step in this process is to normalize this function of theta. I've jumped back to this slide because I'm just here to point out that I want you to recall that theta goes between 0 and pi. So the bounds of our integration for the normalization process is going to be between 0 and pi. The equivalent bounds of integration for theta being between 0 and pi are between 1 and minus 1. That means to normalize them directly as polynomials as a function of x, we have the integral between negative 1 and 1 of p of ml as a function of x times p of ml as a function of x times dx. If we were to write it in terms of angular components, then we substitute in cosine theta for x and negative sine theta d theta for dx. The negative sign reverses the bounds of integration from pi to 0 to 0 to pi, and we get the integral between 0 and pi of sine theta p of ml as a function of cosine x times pm of l as a function of cosine x, or cosine theta d theta. The result of this integral is 2 times l plus the absolute value of m factorial divided by 2l plus 1 times l minus m, or the absolute value of m, um, all to the factorial which means that the constant we multiply the Legendre function solution is the square root of 2L plus 1 times L minus the absolute value of M factorial divided by 2 times L plus the absolute value of M factorial. 